SpaceX is in its redemption arc. Starship's upcoming flight is make or break. There's no room for error. To ensure success, a series of critical tests and upgrades have been implemented. One of them significantly improved the ship's splashdown process. What improvements will be made? What will help them avoid the fate of the previous flight? Follow me to Starbase and find out. Now, before we get to the upgrade splashdown process, SpaceX just achieved a cool achievement on the upper stage that will be used on Flight 8. SpaceX is preparing for the eighth test flight of Starship at an unprecedented pace. Flight 8's ship, S-34, has just undergone an incredible static fire test. On February 12th, Ship 34 successfully ignited its six Raptor engines. Since the test took place at night, the power and beauty of the flames from these six engines were clearly visible. If you looked closely, you could even spot the shockwaves rippling through the clouds during the test. The test lasted an impressive 56 seconds. This lengthy experiment also carried with it a significant amount of destructive power. Molten slag was spotted being ejected from the flame deflector during the test which could indicate moderate to severe damage to the deflector surface after enduring such an intense test. Since concrete spalling wouldn't produce this many sparks, it's likely that the material is coming from the deflector itself. After the test, S-34's aft flaps were stowed, and the ship returned to Mega Bay 2 later the same day. SpaceX revealed that during the static fire test, they used new hardware to subject the six Raptor engines to multiple thrust levels. This approach was designed to simulate the varying conditions the propulsion system experiences during flight. The data from this test will not only guide upgrades to the ship's hardware and flight profile for the next launch, but also simulate the conditions Starship Block 2 systems faced on the previous flight. This will provide the company with valuable insights ensuring they can refine the system and avoid repeating past mistakes. To gain deeper insight into the failure of the S-33, Test Tank 16, the first Block 2 ship test tank, is being prepared for pressure testing with the goal of studying the failure point observed in the S-33. While the sight of thousands of Starship fragments burning and falling was certainly epic, we'd prefer to avoid seeing the ship explode again. It's always wise to err on the side of caution. Booster 15 recently completed a successful static fire test. On Saturday, SpaceX shared an update revealing that Booster 15, the next flight-ready Starship Super Heavy booster, had rolled out of its production facility and headed to the launch pad. Then on Sunday afternoon, SpaceX announced a successful static fire, igniting the booster's Raptor engines. This marks the first test in the final series to prepare both the booster and upper stage ship for launch. The B-15 has been carefully removed from the OLM and positioned onto the transport stand in preparation for its return to the building site where flight readiness upgrades will be performed. At SpaceX's pace, it looks like they'll actually have Starship ready by the 24th of this month. However, before Flight 8 can take place, They'll need FAA approval, and the Flight 7 crash investigation is still pending. In addition to the new propulsion hardware, Flight 8 has many changes that make the Starship's re-entry and splashdown process unlike any previous test flight. The splashdown process begins with the spacecraft's re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. With the weight of Starship, it was like a bullet in the process. It is coming down fast and it is coming down hot. Because of this, the flaps were often damaged. Fortunately, SpaceX has made some significant changes to them for this upcoming flight. The forward flaps have been resized and repositioned closer to the vehicle's tip, moving them further from the heat shield. This redesign significantly reduces their exposure to re-entry heating while simplifying both the underlying mechanisms and protective tiling. Additionally, the thickness of this section has been nearly halved, resulting in a substantial reduction in mass and further optimizing the Starship's overall design. 
To protect the ship from high temperatures, the spacecraft will feature the latest generation of tiles, incorporating a backup layer to protect against any potential loss or damage. Additionally, it is expected to include metallic tiles with active cooling, which have yet to be tested in previous flights. These metal shields are SpaceX's attempt to create a heat shield to replace the ceramic tiles they currently use in hopes of achieving complete reusability. When approaching the splashdown location, the Starship will perform the landing flip maneuver. Three Raptor engines will be lit, and the vertical attitude will be recovered using fins and an engine gimbal. As it descends, the engines will shut down one by one, and the gimbal will direct the last engine toward the center to maintain balance as the ship splashes down. This is a highly controlled process that can only be handled by the most advanced computer systems. Remember that new SpaceX hardware test system I mentioned earlier? It will be a key factor in taking the final landing burn to the next level. Ship 34 new propulsion hardware boasts a 25% increase in propellant volume, thanks to the added height of Starship version 2. It also features vacuum jacketed feed lines, a redesigned fuel feed system optimized for the Raptor vacuum engines, and an advanced propulsion avionics module that enhances valve control and streamlines sensor data processing. This upgrade to the propulsion system will bring major changes to the splashdown process. With a larger propellant volume, the spacecraft will be capable of longer missions and have more fuel available for a safer, more controlled landing. The Advanced Propulsion Avionics module will enable the S-34 to land with greater precision and ensure the timing of the gimbal engine is perfectly managed. Additionally, the ship will be outfitted with a newly designed avionics system. Key upgrades include a more powerful flight computer, integrated antennas combining Starlink, GNSS, and backup RF communication functions in a single unit, redesigned inertial navigation and star tracking sensors, and smart batteries and power units that efficiently distribute data. With 2.7 megawatts of power distributed across 24 high-voltage actuators, these enhancements provide added capability and redundancy, ensuring the spacecraft is prepared for increasingly complex missions, such as propellant transfer and landing operations. Along with the propulsion system upgrade, this avionics system will be two important factors for SpaceX to perform future Starship upper stage captures with maximum control. Speaking of Starship catch, it looks like after two more test flights at the latest, SpaceX will attempt to capture the ship's upper stage using Mechazilla. Recently, the nose cone section of Flight 10, S-36, was seen. On it, it was equipped with catch points that would allow the spacecraft to land on the launch tower. What a classic SpaceX way of working! Even as it's busy preparing for its next flight, the Starships and Super Heavies for more distant future flights are also being built simultaneously. Another part that will be fitted to the S-36, a new PEZ dispenser system is also being built. If you're not familiar with the term, a PEZ dispenser is a small, toy-like device that releases rectangular candies one at a time through a small opening. In a similar fashion, SpaceX plans to launch its Starlink payloads into orbit, dispensing them much like those candies through a sliding door to close off the opening in the side of the ship. Elon Musk said about this system, We call it the Pez dispenser, and it's kind of like the Starlink satellites are in this rack, which looks like a Pez thing, because they're like rectangular just like a Pez and they're stacked inside the nose cone, inside the fairing, and, um, since they're low profile, we only need a small door. On the previous flight, 10 Starlink simulations were manually placed inside the S-33, but once the system is fully operational, this manual method won't be feasible. To streamline the process, SpaceX is developing a new system. This mechanism, known as the Dispenser Assembly Platform, is used inside the Star Factory to install the dispensing system within the Starship located just behind the loading bay door. The dispenser itself features an outer section with four silver rails and a robust mechanism at the bottom. 
Installing and testing the Starlink delivery system is very important to SpaceX, especially as they want Starship certified and operational as soon as possible. Meanwhile, also at Starbase, SpaceX is making significant progress in building its Pad B. The top of the orbital launch mount for Pad B is now fully welded, with just the final installation of the cover remaining. I've come to realize that the B in OLM Pad B stands for Beast, because that thing is absolutely massive. Now for the real big thing on Pad B, Launch Tower 2. Along with the assembly of the arms, a key piece being installed is the traveling block. A traveling block is the movable part of a block and tackle system, featuring a set of pulleys or sheaves through which the drill line, wire rope, is threaded or reeved. It sits opposite and beneath the stationary crown block. Together, the traveling block, crown block, and drill line enable the lifting of weights in the hundreds of thousands of pounds. On larger drilling rigs, it's not uncommon for line tensions to exceed a million pounds when raising or lowering the derrick. SpaceX uses this system to move Mechazilla's giant metal chopsticks when lifting Super Heavy and Starship onto the launch mount, as well as catch them when they land. The reason I mention them is because SpaceX upgraded this part on Tower 2. They've expanded the traveling block's slots to accommodate seven reeving loops instead of five. While this modification may slightly slow down the movement of the arms, it will dramatically boost the weight capacity the tower can handle. The reason they are doing this is because Starship 5-2 will be able to carry a much larger payload than V-1, which requires related facilities like the launch tower to adapt as well. Additionally, to protect these facilities from the destructive power of the V-2, the flame trench is being built. This is a structure designed to redirect or disperse the flame, heat, and exhaust gases produced by rocket engines. The primary goal of the diverter is to prevent the flame from causing damage to equipment, infrastructure, or the surrounding environment. The flame trench is reinforced with concrete and features a manifold system that supplies water for cooling and sound suppression during launches. This setup not only protects the launch pad, but also enhances its durability over time, making it suitable for frequent use as SpaceX ramps up its launch schedule. The construction of Pad B is in preparation for the increased production of Starship once the ship is certified and operational. Not stopping there, they plan to turn Florida into the second production base of this ship. SpaceX plans to build two more launch towers there, and they have already cleared the way for the build of a gigabay at the Cape for future Starship mass production. Soon, Starship will become SpaceX's main ship, and not only that, it will become the most important vehicle for space travel. SpaceX has always thrived on a fast-paced, high-energy culture, but now it feels like they're pushing that ethic further than ever before. This isn't a job for a 9-to-5 mentality. The team at SpaceX understands that what they're building isn't just another project. It's revolutionary space technology that will change the game. That belief, that sense of purpose, is what fuels their drive every single day.